If you love the striking look of illustrations that make good use of negative space to imply much more than the artist actually drew, then this video is for you. Today I'm drawing a zebra by only drawing its stripes, eyes, and hooves, and I'm going to give you all of my best tips and tricks for the style along the way. Hello, and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. At the risk of boring you with my third black ink video in a row outside of Inktober, we're revisiting an old favorite, negative space portraits. If you've had a really good poke around through my archive, you might know that the oldest public video on this channel is a negative space zebra foal, and that's what I'm doing again today. I've sketched an outline for this zebra using a lavender color erase pencil. You really don't have to use a colored sketching pencil, obviously I just like them. The important thing is that you put down a guide for where the edges of the zebra are. Well, zebra, tiger, whatever it is you're trying to draw in this sort of style. The reason I like using colored sketching pencils is because when I clean up my scanned artwork in Photoshop, if any bits of the sketch didn't erase completely, it's really easy to target a color and get rid of it without affecting everything else in the image. When I work in this style on animal portraits, I like to draw only their markings, their facial features, and then, depending on the composition, something to ground the feet. With zebras, that's easy because they've got hooves. When it's big cats, for example, I'll include the claws. The idea is that when you're done and you erase the sketched outline, you can still see the animal's general shape and even some of the finer details because you've given the viewer's brain enough information to fill the rest in. Today I'm working with Sakura Micron Fineliners in my A5 sized Hanamule Nostalgia sketchbook and this piece took about an hour to complete, including the sketch which I didn't film. Whether you're creating designs to sell or just practicing a technique, this is a relatively quick way to draw complicated subjects, so I definitely recommend giving it a try sometime. I like starting with the head whenever I'm drawing animals, and because I'm right-handed and the zebra is facing left, it just makes sense to work from the head to the tail, but you certainly don't have to. Fill in your details in whatever order pleases you. I like to rough out where everything is going to go first and then go back through and fill in the details after I've erased the sketch. Right now you're watching me draw hollow stripes and you'll notice I'm allowing the line to be pretty rough and wiggly in places. Letting the lines be rough can help imply fur texture, but if it's too much or not what you're going for, don't worry about it at this stage. This is just the planning stage. And yes, by the way, obviously you can do this planning stage in pencil if you want to, if that's something you're more comfortable with. The reason I go straight in with ink after the outline sketch is because, as I mentioned, I'm going to erase the sketch as soon as this planning stage is done. If I planned in pencil, either I would have to be super careful erasing around all of these planning bits, or I would have to completely trace over the planning in ink anyway, <laughs> before I erased it. Why should I still put down ink? Well, put a pin in that. We'll talk about it in a minute when I get to the filling in the markings part. I do generally use reference photos when I draw, no matter what medium or style I'm doing, and this piece was no different. I was referring to a photo of a herd of zebras crossing a road, which I found on wildlifereferencephotos.com, and I'm referring only to the foal that was completely in frame. There were two adult zebras also partially in the shot. I used the reference to make sure that I had the right shape for this animal, because honestly, if I tried to draw a zebra from memory, I'd have drawn a domestic horse, and they are absolutely not the same shape. Similar, not the same. Zebras are generally more compact, their top line is either a lot more flat than the average horse or very downhill, and their necks are very thick. When it comes to drawing the markings, I'm using the reference to decide what direction the stripe should go on the different areas of the zebra's body, but I'm not trying to replicate the exact coat pattern of the zebra in my reference photo. 
unless you've been commissioned to produce a negative space piece in this sort of style of a particular individual animal, you really don't need to make the markings match up exactly. Nobody's going to look at this and be confused about what animal I've drawn, and 99.9% .9 of people looking at this are not going to recognize the photo it came from and want to go check it to be able to compare to see if the stripes match up. I did all of my planning ink markings with a 0.5mm nib pen, which is the smallest micron I own, but now that it's time to fill those markings in, you'll see me grabbing for several different pens. I had everything up to the 05 taken out, but I don't think I ended up using the 05. I think 03 is the largest I used. I filled in the skinniest markings with the 01, and I also used the 01 to thicken up the outlines of the thicker markings before switching to the 02 or the 03 to fill them in faster. Depending on whether or not you want to scan your artwork and clean it up after, and what methods you use to do that, you may want to be more careful than I was being about the consistency with your pen strokes. Ink from large nibs will look a little more translucent next to the outlines and planning marks I made. I'll be using a color overlay layer effect in Photoshop once I isolate the ink markings from the white of the paper to make it completely flat like I did with the Year of the Tiger yin-yang design in last Friday's video, so I'm not worried about that. If you're not going that route, pay extra attention to keeping the saturation of your ink and the direction of any visible individual pen strokes as consistent as possible. Alright, so that pin we stuck in why I would recommend always inking your planning marks and erasing the outline early on, time to pull that pin out and talk about it. Once your outline sketch is gone and you're starting to fill in and clean up the markings you want to include on the drawing, you'll start to notice things that don't quite look accurate anymore now that the outline is gone. Sometimes you'll have markings that did go right to the edge of the outline, but now that the outline is gone, it doesn't look like it reaches all the way when compared to the markings around it. Similarly, you might have markings that weren't supposed to reach all the way across, but now it looks like it was supposed to and maybe you want to just go ahead and make it go all the way across. Now is the time to choose where you're going to extend markings, where you want to make edges look smoother or bulk them out and make them even rougher, and where you want to add extra markings. Now that your sketch is gone and your planned markings are in place, you can see what the implied shape of the animal is going to be in the finished piece, and you can see where you need to make changes to trick the eye into seeing the correct shapes. At this point, even if you are trying to replicate the exact markings of a particular subject that will be recognizable to your viewer, no one is going to put this up against your reference photo with a lightbox and check. Make the illusion of the complete shape work, even if it means making the marks you're actually putting on the page a little inaccurate. This type of art style is all about creating the illusion of accuracy, not about actually being completely accurate. Also, if you like the style but you aren't interested in just doing a flat black and white or some other single color and white or whatever, by all means get detailed. This type of illustration using negative space also looks amazing when the portions you choose to draw are completely rendered. By the way, let me know if you'd like to see a tutorial on how I would clean up a scan of this drawing and similar ones in Photoshop, like the tutorial I included in last Friday's video. I'll admit I filmed this way too close to my editing deadline, so I didn't have time, but I will be cleaning this one up to put on prints and merch on my various print-on-demand shops. I certainly can screen record the process and walk you through it. If you like this video, here are some other videos you might like on the left of the screen that you can go ahead and check out right now. I upload twice a week at minimum, every Tuesday and Thursday. I'm planning to host an international giveaway once I qualify for the YouTube Partner Program, so thank you so much for helping me reach that 1,000 subscriber threshold. I'll see you tomorrow with an awesome collab video I'm doing with a few of my Art Addicts Alliance friends. Bye!